time for Breakfast with the Coaches on ESPN 101.5 AM 1570. Breakfast with the Coaches is our weekly sit-down with area coaches from Yankton and Vermilion talking about the sports seasons, including fall and winter. Breakfast with the Coaches is brought to you by our Yankton and Vermilion sportscasters. It's now time. Here's Joe Van Gore. And good morning, everyone. Welcome to another spring sports edition of Breakfast with the Coaches with our Yankton and Vermilion High School coaches here on ESPN 101.5 AM 1570 and online at kvtk.com. We'll start off with a programming note. There will be no Breakfast with the Coaches next Saturday morning as we start the month of May. Uh, Have uh, PA duties at the Howard Wood Dakota Relays next Friday and Saturday, May 5th and 6th. But let's start off with our Yankton High School coaches. On the line with us now is Yankton girls golf coach Brett Syme. Coach Syme, how are you this sunny Saturday morning? Doing all right. I just wish uh, I wish the temperatures would rise for us a little bit. Uh, I just got out and walked the dog and 38 degrees still. So <laughs> yeah. hoping, uh, hoping here in the next week or when, you know, when we change to May that, uh, that we can get a little bit uh, better temperatures coming up here. All right. Well, at least it's not snowing, but I guess that's uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's a giveaway. Well, it, yeah. it basically was in the morning at uh, Pier Invite. We had to push things back because there was snow flurries. All right. Well, let's start there. <laughs> uh, on Tuesday, uh, the Pier Invitational at uh, Hillsview, and, of course, uh, that's where the uh, state double-A meet uh, will be coming up uh, in early June. Uh, the Gazelles plays fifth with a 343. Yeah, we had a really good tournament up there. It was basically a tie for fourth. Uh, they ended up doing tiebreakers or whatever, but but we did tie for the fourth best score. Um, you know, it was by far the best tournament we've had all year. Uh, we ended up taking off Monday after school. We decided uh, instead of practicing in Yankton and then heading to Pierce, We'd try and get up to pier and maybe practice a little bit there, see if we could uh, get a feel for the greens, you know, just uh, just get loose up there. And then we'd spend the night and, and get up and play the tournament. And, you know, with the weather outlook, they had pushed it back from 10 o'clock start to 11 o'clock start. And then we got up Tuesday morning and, and it was raining and actually snowed a little bit, like I mentioned earlier. Yeah. So then they ended up pushing everything back to 1.30. So then that made for kind of a late uh, a late day in pier and a late night on the trip back home. But, you know, it was a great tournament for our girls. I think it helps going up and practice in there uh, on Monday night. And, you know, just getting them out there to chip and putt on those greens, I think really helped some of them uh, get a feel for it for Tuesday. And, you know, like we said, uh, it was a tie for fourth place. Uh, Elliot Homestead. Uh, shot her, I think it was her best round in high school competition, shooting at 78. It was actually the second best score of the tournament. Three other girls tied at 77, but uh, that put her in a tie for fourth at 78. Elsie Larson shot her best uh, round in her high school career with an 81. Uh, that was a, in a tie for ninth, so having two girls in the top 10 is always a good uh, sign for your team. And then we had Gracie Brockberg with a 91 and Sabrina Kraske with a 93 that rounded out our counting four. So, you know, when you get uh, all your girls that are counting at low 90s or better, uh, you're looking pretty good for for a team score. And and that was the first time we had been able to do that this year. And we ended up with a team score of 343, which was, you know, 26 shots better than, I think, our best of the year. So it was a great tournament for us. You know, and all 19 teams that are in Double A were there. Uh, there was 95 players there, so it was basically, um, you know, a, a state tournament preview. So I was glad to see that our girls, you know, went out, played there well, and I I hope that gives them confidence going through the the rest of the year to know that that's what we're capable of. All right, then we go to uh, yesterday, uh, Simer. I know the weather wasn't uh, all that great either. I was out of state, but I uh, had heard that the weather wasn't going to be all that great uh, on Friday, but you still got the quad in uh, with uh, Brandon Valley, Harrisburg, Anna Gorman at uh, Fox Run. You know, actually uh, the first uh, home appearance uh, for the Gazelles and, uh, well, just one of two appearances at home this year. And uh, the Gazelles were third in the quad behind 
uh, Harrisburg and a Gorman with a 392. Yeah, and you know, that tournament, it's a good tournament for us. Harrisburg's a very good quality team, and Old Gorman, year in, year out, is a good quality team. Um, you know, we were hoping maybe to be, you know, the top team in our quad or, or maybe second. You know, we were hoping to maybe beat one of those teams because we did at Pier. We beat both of those teams at Pier. But, uh, you know, it was a tough day to play. And, you know, when I got up on, um, when I got up on Thursday morning, it was, uh, or Friday morning, excuse me, I, I looked outside and ground was wet and it was windy already. And, and I was wondering if we were going to get it in, um, also. So, you know, we kind of talked to the other schools and they were going to leave. Brandon Valley was going to leave at about eight thirty, So we figured we better make a decision by then. And, and looking at the hourly forecast, we decided that, uh, that we could probably still get it in and, and when we started, it was kind of cold. It was breezy. And by the end of the tournament, at least, uh, you know, it warmed up a little bit. But, boy, we just can't get away from that wind. And we're kind of hoping one of these tournaments we can catch a break and, and get a nice day to play. But, you know, we still had some good individual efforts. Um, I would say across the field uh, that wind really affected people because, you know, even even the girls from the other teams were probably – it seemed like five to 10 shots higher than they normally shoot. It was kind of crazy yesterday. So we, uh, we were led yesterday by Elia Homestead again, shooting at 89. Uh, she was in a tie for second. She had a great start to her round or actually she was in second place, but, uh, she started out birdie birdie on the first couple of holes. And then on number three, just ran into a little bit of trouble and, uh, and ended up taking a 10 on that hole. Those of you that have played number three, you know, know if you're playing it in the wind, it can get a little, it can be a little bit of trouble. But Indeed, uh, yeah. she she really came back well and, you know, played really well the rest of the, the nine and ended up shooting, I think it was either 43 or 44 on the front. But with a 10 on there, you know, I got to give her a lot of credit for not just giving up and thinking, oh man, you know, it's over. But she battled the whole rest of the way and, and we, in fact, we thought she was tied for first at the end of the match, but we did end up finding out that there was just a score wrong in Golf Genius, and, and she ended up being one shot behind. But, you know, she's really been a, a good leader, a playing leader for us. Um, she's playing really good golf right now, and I'm just really looking forward to see what she's got in the future. You know, just being an eighth grader now, she's got a lot of years in Gazelle's golf ahead of her. But uh, then we were also uh, another – girl that played really well was Sabrina Kraske. She had a 94. She was in fifth place yesterday. Again, just a freshman, so looking for really good things out of her coming up in the future. <clears throat> and then we had Elsie Larson shooting a 102. And, you know, you can either pick Gracie Brockberg or Madison Riken, who shot 107 to, to count as that last counter. But, you know, we went from shooting our best score on Tuesday to our worst score yesterday at home. But I also think it was maybe the toughest conditions we've had to play in so far this year. So, like I said, you know, me, the girls, we're just kind of hoping to catch a break uh, for the weather in this next week. And, and you know, hopefully we can get uh, get a tournament in where, where we don't have to fight all these elements and we can try and get those scores down a little bit. All right. And now as we talk about uh, next week, uh, big week indeed, uh, coming up Tuesday – a quad at Lakeview in Mitchell with Mitchell, Sioux Falls, All Jefferson, right. and Sioux Falls, Lincoln. I got to stop you there because we oh. do, I think we're going to have a schedule change. Okay. Um, supposedly, Sioux Falls is backing out of that meet, and we're not real happy about it. But, uh, you know, that kind of basically takes a counting meet away from us. But, uh, yeah, they switched around to their city tournament from Monday to Tuesday, so they're going to stay back in Sioux Falls and play in that. So then we're kind of scrambling here and we're not going to play the Tuesday meet up in Mitchell, but we're probably going to go Thursday up to Huron and play in the Huron Invitational. So we can have another okay. chance to, to play uh, in a tournament that'll count towards the uh, averages that'll make girls eligible for the state tournament. So that's what we're looking at doing. Now we're going to go to Huron on Thursday, which is going to make it a little harder for me to, to get things ready for our Yankton invite yeah. on Friday, but it is what it is. Yep. Okay. So um, 
Again, no quad on Tuesday in Mitchell, but the Gazelles going to the Huron Invitational on Thursday. How many teams are going to that, Brett? Um, I think it's going to be pretty similar to ours this year. Uh, it's either 11 or 12. Um, the Sioux Falls schools are not going to come to our Invitational on Friday because they uh, they decided to go to Pier on Tuesday, which, you know, I guess I don't blame them, but, you know, their school district, the uh, if they do go to a tournament that isn't on their schedule, then they make them drop another tournament. So they decided to drop the ancient invitational this year. And, and uh, you know, it's, I guess that's their prerogative, but you know, we'll still have a really strong field at the, at the ancient invite. It's going to be probably a lot of the same teams that we're going to see Thursday in Huron. So it's going to be a lot of the ESD schools and probably Rapid City Stevens, O'Gorman. And uh, those are probably the teams we're going to see on, Thursday and Friday. All right. So the Yankton Gazelles girls golf team, again, a schedule change, no quad with Mitchell, Jefferson, and Lincoln on Tuesday at the Huron Invitational Thursday, and then the big Yankton Invitational coming up Friday starting at 9 a.m. at uh, Fox Run in Yankton. All right, Coach. Actually, Sine. that is now, and that is now 10 o'clock. That 10 o'clock. has been okay. changed. Yep. Because. Yeah, I know schedule change is crazy, but with the weather we've been having, you know, Fox Run was nice enough to maybe give us an extra hour so that uh, it'll hopefully warm up a little bit before we start. So I, I really appreciate them doing that, and uh, I think it'll be it'll make for a little bit better tournaments the way that things have been going here lately. So hopefully we can get a little bit warmer weather this next week, and and just looking forward to some big tournaments we got to play in. All right, sounds good. Well, Coach, uh, as we uh, mentioned at the top of the show, we'll have uh, no show next week, but we'll talk about uh, a lot of golf uh, coming up uh, in a couple weeks that will un- include the Huron Invitational, the Yankton Invitational, the Marshan Cup with uh, Mitchell, and then the um, uh, Invitational at uh, Mitchell coming up uh, on Friday, May 12th. So, have a good couple of weeks. We'll catch up with you in, uh, in two weeks on Saturday, May 8th. All right. Sounds good, Joe. Thanks for everything you guys do for, for all of our sports, and thanks for covering everybody. All right. Well, actually, uh, folks, uh, my, uh, my calendar is wrong, but uh, a couple of weeks. Next week is May 6th. Then it would be May 13th. May 13th, we'll catch up with Coach Sign. All right. We're off and running with our Yankton coaches here on Breakfast with the Coaches. We'll be back with more after this. There's a whole new world out there. It's called the off-road, and it's waiting to be explored in the Polaris. So gear up to make every moment count with the Polaris off-road vehicle with an electric cargo box lift. Tackle heavy lifting with the push of a button. The dash-mounted switch allows you to easily lift and dump cargo. And when work turns to play, turn up that soundtrack to make your rides even more epic with a Rockford Fosgate audio system optimized for the off-road. Get ready to tackle trails and to-do lists this spring and summer with machines like these. Your world just gets bigger at Stockman's Motorsport in Yankton. F&BO is the great big small bank, and for more than 165 years, we've been with you where you are. A bank that's ready for all your needs, both big and small. Here to help you earn more, save more, so you can do more every step of the way. It's what you can expect from the great big small bank. F&BO, independent and family owned for six generations, and ever so focused on you. Stop on by or visit us at fnbo.com, member FDIC. You've all heard of the Maytag Man, but have you heard of the Murph Man? He's your local Maytag service professional, delivering sparkling dishes, fresh clothing, and ice-cold milk with top-quality Maytag appliances. Or if your current appliance breaks down, he is on it. Murph, Murph, he's your man from Murph's Appliance in downtown Vermilion. Big city selection, small town service. You'll find the Murph Man at Murph Supplies in downtown Vermilion on Main Street. Now here's an eating place that is open seven days a week so you can come in and enjoy one of 16 delicious and different burgers. It's the Bro Burger Bar and it's open every day at 11 a.m. at 304 West 3rd Street in Yankton. Stop in for lunch or supper, enjoy the featured burger or one of the mini burgers on the menu. Looking for a place to have a cold one and catch your favorite sporting event? Then check out the many different tapiers. The Bro Burger Bar, a modern spin on a classic burger joint. 
And back with more Breakfast with the Coaches on ESPN 101.5 AM 1570 online at kvtk.com. Continuing on with our Yankton High School coaches on the line with us now, Yankton boys tennis coach Ryan Haig and Coach Haig, and we've got uh, a couple triangulars to talk about. about. First of all, on Tuesday, Tuesday, a uh, well, a uh, well, actually a duel with Lennox Lennox and the JV's duel Vermillion. But talk about that one first of all on Tuesday. First of all on Tuesday. Yeah, you know, Vermilion and Lennox coming to town, and, you know, we, we have a pretty good idea what Vermilion has. You know, we've played them a couple times already this year, but Lennox was the team that we were kind of focused on primarily. Um, we knew very, we knew they would be very, very good at the top um, of their uh, of their flight order, and they proved us exactly right. Um, they are a very scary team to a lot of people, um, a lot of other teams, and um, we had to come out firing um, where they could catch us. And, and uh, you know, their number one and their number two and number three are very impressive players. And, uh, you know, they got us at number one. And, uh, you know, when, when uh, it, cause, it, it can cause problems up and down our lineup when uh, we drop a couple here and there. But uh, we were able to get out of there with a win. And, um, you know, just – Lennox shows that, uh, you know, never look past any of your opponents. And, um, you know, when the guys kind of saw, you know, Zach went down early a little bit with, you know, with that, that early loss. And, and uh, the rest of the team kind of rallied around him and, you know, showed a lot of positive things there with, uh, you know, how when, when one of our guys goes down a little bit early, we can uh, kind of rally and battle back and, and, and get through with a, with a team victory. So pretty proud of that. And our JV guys were had the opportunity to get on the court with, with Vermillion and, and, uh, you know, they played very, very well and they got a lot of tennis in on that day. Um, because Lennox and Vermillion brought everybody on their, on their roster and we played, um, over at Memorial Park as well. So it was a good day of tennis. Uh, the weather was really nice. And, uh, you know, that was kind of something that we hadn't seen all season long was uh, nice outdoor weather. So pretty yeah. happy for that. Yeah. That's right. Uh, That's right. Uh, Yankton edges Lennox Yankton five edges to four, Lennox five to four, and the uh, Yankton JVs uh, defeat Vermillion six to three. Then we go to Thursday, then we go to Thursday on, the road, on the road at Watertown, at Watertown, couple Watertown of couple of Watertown, a couple of VSD teams, and pick up a couple wins, edging Watertown five to four, and defeating Brookings nine to nothing. Yeah, you know, first time we've seen both of the teams this year, and. Um, you know, I'd been kind of taking a look at Watertown scores and, um, you know, we do have a few common opponents uh, uh, as well. So, you know, when you take a look at Watertown scores, you know, they're pretty much doing the exact same thing we've been doing, winning pretty much the same flights and beating schools by pretty much the same scores we were. So we anticipated a very um, close duel and uh, we got exactly what we anticipated. And, uh, you know, Watertown puts together a very solid program every single year and obviously it being an ESD matchup and playing on their home courts we knew that you know we better be you know playing at our top uh, game in order to get past them and you know we came out started with doubles first and I thought we played very very well in doubles and we we got a win at number one and number three doubles and lost a close one at two doubles but um, coming out of doubles with two wins felt pretty good about where we were at in the duel and and uh really came out firing uh kind of on all cylinders and singles immediately after that and you know we got up in a lot of our matches but give Watertown credit I mean they really battled back hard and although they found themselves behind early on in those singles matches I think every single one of those singles matches um eventually they found themselves in the lead and uh you know put our guys in a position to have to kind of scramble a little bit and have to kind of dig down deep and and work really hard in order to get uh, three more the three more victories that we needed in order to secure the team uh, team win. And our guys were able to do that um, at a couple key key spots. Um, Harrison Kraftsky was you know play, you know he's he's been there done that for us. Even though he's just a freshman, you know he's very very experienced and and he was able to get a you know scratch out a win for us. And Miles Kraftsky is another one of those guys again been there done that for us and. You know, we kind of lean on those guys with experience, and, and those two guys uh, got it done for us there. And, uh, then we had a young guy, you know, just a freshman, Luke Moeller, stepped in at number six, and 
and got a nice win for us there. And those are the three wins that we needed um, to get that 5-4 win. So I'm very happy with the way it, it ended up. But, uh, you know, we did see a few things that we, we definitely need to work on. And, you know, and one of those things being uh, when we get a lead, we kind of have to slam the door shut a little bit and not let our opponents back in. Um, and, uh, you know, we did that a little bit with Watertown, but at the same time, um, we also have to understand, you know, as long as you've got, uh, as long as you've got points left in the game, you, you still have a chance. And, 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 and we did a nice job with, with, uh, closing things down at the end of the Watertown duel. And Brookings is a much younger team, much less experienced team. And, and, uh, you know, they're building right now. They're, they're improved over a year ago. Um, so they're on the right track, but, uh, just weren't probably aren't quite deep enough yet to compete um, with the, the the upper ESD teams right now, and um, you know they they fought hard and and uh, just couldn't quite win some of the the big points, and they won a lot of points. Just you know in tennis, it's it's key to kind of win the last point of each of the games, and they just couldn't figure out a way to quite to win the last point of a lot of those games, and um, you know we came out with a nice 9-0 win there. All right, now uh, coming All right, up next now, week. Uh, coming up next week, Monday. Monday, a quad in a Mitchell, quad in Mitchell with Mitchell, with Peer, Mitchell and Vermillion. Peer, and Vermillion. Yeah, you know that's that's one of the events that we look, you know, kind of put on the calendar every year because you're head, we're heading to Mitchell and it'll it'll be our second duel with Mitchell. We we dueled them earlier in the year, I think, with a seven-two victory. So, but in that seven-two victory, I believe there was two or three super tie breaks. Um, so you you take those tie breaks and you flip them around the other direction. That duel flips around very very quickly, and um, you know it's kind of we kind of use this duel as kind of a measuring stick to see um, you know whether or not we've gained ground uh, throughout the course of the season, or you know kind of just kind of stayed where we were at. And um, I know Mitchell is going to probably have a little bit different lineup than what they had um, earlier in the season, so that'll make things interesting as well. And, just the fact that it's on their home court and it is another ESD matchup. Um, you know, and those ESD matchups generally are always very, very tight. And, and uh, uh, we're going to have to come out firing. There's no doubt about that. And, you know, Pier, I think, is a is a very young team. They graduated almost their entire team last year. They are very, very competitive last year, very good team, played a lot of high-level tennis, and they have a lot of young kids this year. So, they're looking to get some experience and, and play against, um, you know, a quali- quality competition, which we'll give them hopefully uh, on on Monday. And then Vermilion, we will not play uh, just simply because we've played them so many times already this year. And so sure. um, we'll, we'll get up, we'll get on the road and head back to Yankton uh, a little bit earlier than the other teams. All right, and then uh, all right, and then uh, going right back on going Tuesday, right back on Tuesday to Sioux Falls for a Sioux triangular, Falls with, for Sioux a Falls triangular with Sioux Falls Christian, Sioux Falls Christian, and Sioux Falls Lincoln, and Sioux Falls Lincoln. Yeah, you know, Sioux Falls Lincoln, you know, you play those guys, you're you're playing the cream of the crop. You know, they are perennially, um, you know, the the top program or one of the top programs in the state every single year. And, uh, you know, there's no doubt that this year they are the team to beat in Class AA. Um, they are just, you know, to be perfectly honest, probably on another level than just about every other team in the state. And uh, they're, they're an incredible team, but you always want to play the best competition um, to see where you're at, and you know, hopefully, you know, we we may not the scoreboard. Who knows what the scoreboard is going to end up at the end of the day? But uh, you know, ultimately, we want to be winning some a lot of points. And if we can scramble around and win a lot of points, and 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 be confident coming off the court, we'll be happy with that. And and uh, we'll follow things up with a duel against Sioux Falls Christian, who, you know, in the last several years has really put a quality product on the court as well. And, and uh, and uh, that should be a very competitive duel, and um, we're looking forward to uh, playing on brand new tennis courts up there in Sioux Falls at Tomar Park and a 12 court complex that's uh, just I think on the other side of the interstate, pretty much from Sioux Falls Lincoln, and and now kind of the home of uh, Sioux Falls Christian. So uh, kind of excited to go out get out there and see what that that complex looks like, and and hopefully we get another nice weather day up there for that, and and. Uh, and uh, it, it hopefully maybe come home, possibly maybe with a, maybe partial sunburn would be nice. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, yeah, yeah, no doubt. Uh, and uh, yeah. the weather, and, uh, uh, hopefully, the weather uh, hopefully a little bit better than this week. A little I'm, bit better than this week. At least uh, like we talked least, to Coach uh, Simon, like it didn't snow, Coach Simon didn't snow, but it did snow in Peer for them uh, last, uh, last Tuesday morning. But it uh, sounds like uh, the weather will be like okay. Okay. I mean, from what it has been. From what it has uh, been. Coming up uh, next week. Coming up well, uh, next week. Coach well, Hague, 
Uh, again, no show uh, again, no next show, week because next I'm at the Howard Wood Dakota Relays, Dakota so, Dakota we, will so we, will we will catch up with you on Saturday, May 13th, Saturday, May 13th and that uh, pretty, and much, that, will uh, pretty much will wrap up the, uh, regular, up season the uh, regular season after uh, next week, after, uh, next uh, Saturday, May 6th, uh, the quad, May 6th and then quad, and then ESD on Tuesday, on Tuesday May 9th. So May when we 9th. talk to you so next on Breakfast with the Coaches, we'll talk about a lot of tennis. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me on, Joe. All right. All right. Ryan Haig, the boys' tennis coach at Yankton High School here on Breakfast with the Coaches. Quick timeout, and we'll be back to talk track and field with Yankton coach Jeff Gross after this. Your choice of pharmacy is as important as choosing your doctor. Hi, this is Michael from Yankton Rexall. At Yankton Rexall, we pride ourselves in knowing our patients and their medical history while offering a wide range of services such as our exclusive innovative med pack system, immunizations, free prescription delivery, and mailing, quality support hosiery, and recommending a safe allergy medicine. More services than the chain pharmacy, plus that hometown neighborly touch, Yankton Rexall, your hometown pharmacy located in the Meridian District. When is the best time to have your wisdom teeth evaluated? When should you have them removed? Hi, this is Dr. George from Siouxland Oral Surgery. Reasons to have wisdom teeth removed include malposition, infection, cyst formation, pain, and for orthodontic reasons. That's why you need an expert oral surgeon. Siouxland Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery in Mitchell, Yankton, Brookings, and Sioux Falls. Trust your smile to the team of the board-certified surgeons, Drs. Miller, George, and Leet at Siouxland Oral Surgery. Make your appointment today at SiouxlandOralSurgery.com. Oral Surgery by Oral Surgeons. Trexedo, a real truck company, has new job opportunities for you. They are searching for motivated candidates to fill a variety of roles, including production assemblers on their weekday and weekend shifts, as well as an industrial engineer and mechanical engineer. Trexedo offers a positive and team-oriented environment with many perks and benefits. Come seek the new opportunities Trexedo has for you. Visit truxedo.com backslash careers to apply. I'm Lane Sawatsky from Yankton, South Dakota originally, and I'm the owner at SWAT Chiropractic and Rehab. I love going out to the lake, visiting the river, kind of turned into a river out here as of late. That's another thing you leave Yankton and you take for granted. All the years, all the days out on the lake, out on the river with buddies, and that's another great thing that I, I really missed. And another thing that kind of brought us back to is just being out on the water, absorbing some, some sunlight and, and hanging out. Come thrive with us at YanktonSD.com. Breakfast with the Coaches on ESPN 101.5 AM 1570 online at kvtk.com. Continuing on with our Yankton High School coaches. On the line with us now, Yankton track and field coach Jeff Gross. And Jeff, uh, a busy, well, end of the week, I guess you can call it, uh, for the Bucks and Gazelles track and field teams and also uh, the middle school teams as well. But we go to Thursday, the annual First Dakota Relays and uh, a wide range of teams, double A, A, and B. But uh, I would say the Bucks and Gazelles uh, had a pretty good day on Thursday, didn't they? Yep. Uh, we, you know, we have 40 events, of course, combined between the boys and the girls uh, that we put, uh, you know, together at any South Dakota high school track meet, which, just for trivia's sake, that's uh, about as many track events. Uh, I don't think people in South Dakota realize this. That's about as many track events as anybody in the nation has at any track meet. Um, so it's just exciting how many events our kids get to compete in. Um, and then we, uh, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of states, you know, have about that number of 16 or 17 events. Uh, and then we have five relays on top of that. Some yeah. states only have three relays. So um, we give it, get our kids a lot of opportunities and, uh, you know, with our numbers here in Yankton, it's it's exciting that we can fill all of those spots and be competitive at it. But uh, like you said, Joe, on uh, Thursday we had a 17-team uh, track meet here. Um, the weather was a little, you know, it, 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 South Dakota spring. Yeah. I uh, had some rain there and so forth. But uh, by the end of the day um, and the way our kids competed, and we'll get into the sp specifics of that here in a little bit, but – it was a very surreal, romantic almost, <laughs> uh, just the way you – theatrical, I guess, finish to the night with the lights on the track and the reflection of the, you know, the, the wet uh, surfaces and, 
Uh, then the performances that our kids threw out there. It was just uh, an incredible evening. Oh, you bet. Uh, well, let's uh, start uh, with the Bucks. Uh, four event wins. Uh, boy, it doesn't get much better uh, than, uh, you know, the last event uh, of the uh, the night, the 4 by 400 meter relay where uh, Sioux Falls Christian, who has uh, pretty much been uh, dominating Class A boys and girls track and field so far, and of course they did last year as well, if not the year before, uh, but uh, the Bucks, uh, uh, rugby Riken, uh, you know, ran a great leg and uh, nipped uh, Sioux Falls Christian uh, at the tape. Talk about that race first of all. Uh, that I mean that that was obviously a highlight of the night. Uh, our girls uh, mile relay also was a, a highlight of the night. They didn't uh, win, but uh, I tell you what, competitive wise, um, our boys got out there. Um, uh, the lineup that we ran last night or Thursday night was uh, uh, Austin Goebel, um, um, Nate uh, Schoenfelder. I don't have the names in front of me, so I'm trying to get these out of my 50-year-old memory. <laughs> um, Rugby Reichen anchored it, and then Cooper Grotenice is really getting in the mix for us also. Uh, we got several other, uh, pardon the, uh, the uh, lingo here, but several other bullets that we can put into the chamber there too. And that's what's just really exciting about our boys' mile relay. Um, they're within about two and a half seconds of our school record uh, with that time that they improved upon uh, from our time that we ran earlier this year. Um, they cut about three-quarters of a second or so off of that. But um, our first three legs got us out to about a 15- or 20-meter lead. And uh, Sioux Falls Christian, holy cow, I am yeah. so uh, thankful that they're not in the in our conference or in our uh, in in our division because they'd just be one more team that we'd have to go up against. And uh, obviously, we want to compete against the best, but they are absolutely stacked and loaded. Their uh, two mile relay earlier in the evening ran a, a seven fifty four. They've run a a three thirty six medley earlier this year, um, and they've they've not lost a mile relay up to this point, and they're not going to lose another one unless. We happen to run against them again somewhere, hopefully. But uh, we took them down last night, and that uh, our guys got to be extremely confident uh, from that. And uh, you know, that's not a one one hit pony with us on that. I mean, we've got five, six, seven, eight guys that could be on that mile relay. You start getting that many people that can uh, contribute in that. It's just a very strong indicator of what you can do elsewhere on the track, and that's what makes me so excited about the conference meet for us is uh, just the puzzle pieces there. But, you know, to talk about the guys there specifically, um, it was it, it was very, very fulfilling to see them uh, bear down and get the job done there, and uh, specifically with rugby, the way he, uh, you know, uh, had had a lead or that our guys got to him, and uh, it's a team deal. It's very similar to the way the Bucks won the save basketball tournament. It's not one person out there. Um, the, the first three legs put rugby in a position where he could outkick the, uh, I forget the kid's name from, uh, Sioux Falls Christian, but he's a sub 50 quarter miler and yeah, uh, rugby ran a, a, just right at 50 and I had him just over 50, uh, and, uh, had some assistant coaches, uh, coach Heidi Savvy had him just under 50. So, I mean, it's, it's a legitimate 50 split, which is exciting for rugby as well. So. All right, uh, and then uh, three other event wins uh, for the Bucks. Austin Goble had a day, 200-meter dash winner and winner in the long jump. Yep, and uh, it was kind of funny. Uh, in the school, in the hallways in the morning, I said, time to get 22 today, uh, uh, Austin. And he took that as me saying getting a 22 flat in the 200, but I meant it as a 22-foot jump in the long jump, <laughs> um, which I've never had that confusion before, but uh, – he ended up doing about 22 in both of them. So wow. um, that's, uh, I'm glad I was uh, vague with my suggestion there. But uh, uh, he's Austin's had an incredible year up to this point, and it's just going to get better and better. Um, you know, we're going to be depending on him a lot in the individual events here at uh, the conference meet coming up in a couple weeks. And uh, he does so many things well that uh, I just wish we had more events that we could put him in because uh, – he makes us stronger in all the relays that we have as well that we're able to use them in. Uh, um, conference meet, we'll probably concentrate with him a lot more in some individual events just to accumulate as many points as we can because we do have the depth to uh, 
put really good guys in the other relays too. But uh, Austin had a great day on <clears throat> on Thursday. All right, and then uh, Dylan Payer wins the thirty two hundred for the other event win. <clears throat> Yep, uh, and that was a phenomenal, uh, again, a theatrical moment almost, the way that whole uh, thing went down at the two-mile. He had a great uh, great time in the boys, and then uh, Thea Chance also had a great time on the girls' side, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. But um, Dylan is uh, very similar to Austin in a way, uh, where he's going to make our relays very strong, but when we get to the conference meet, we're going to be able to put him uh, in a lot of individual events to score a lot of points for us, and uh um, he's just not even peaking yet, as none of our kids are. Um, he, of course, had the <clears throat> great experience at the indoor season going to New York and running uh, in the armory there in the indoor nationals, Nike indoor nationals in uh, early March and ran some great times there. So just came into the season in great shape. And uh, he's continuing to work hard with Coach Kate Savvy and all of our distance kids are. Distance crew just had a great day in general on, on Thursday. But, uh, you know, it's, it's been a tough situation here. It just feels very weird that we've had two months of practice and haven't really had very many meets. And now all of a sudden we here we are, uh, you know, with five meets left in the year and getting ready to, uh, for the championship part of the season, which we get to kick off this week going to Howard Wood on, on the uh, next weekend. All right. Uh, let's talk about the Gazelles. They had four event wins. Uh, Thea Chance in the 3200, Tyranny Falk in the 300 meter hurdles. As you mentioned, Sydney Cirque in the 800 meter run. Berkeley Olson in the long jump. Yep, uh, girls did a great job too. Um, you know, our girls two mile relay got out and ran a, a great time and uh, great job there. You mentioned Sydney Cirque. Uh, she ran a very nice split in the uh, two mile relay at a 320 or uh, 222 223 and then she came back and backed that up with a I don't remember the exact time but it was 223 something in the uh, open 800 so uh, she's starting to get into shape for us and a great young lady uh, going to be a great uh, student athlete up at Augustana for the next four years and uh, you mentioned Tierney Spalk as well um, Tierney missed uh, the long jump yesterday um, she was at an awards banquet, academic awards banquet down in Sioux City. There was a luncheon down there, and uh, we have so many phenomenal students, and Tierney's just indicative of that as well. Um, and then on the other end of the spectrum, we had those three senior wins, but then uh, we had a senior in junior high that uh, also uh, with Berkeley who had a really nice jump in the long jump, and, uh, you know, she's knocking on that door that's 17 feet. And as a eighth grader, uh, whose potential has not really even been tapped into yet because um, she's still just trying to figure things out, as all young people are, uh, to be approaching that 17-foot mark is just phenomenal. So um, excited for her as the season and the years continue here, too. And, uh, and of course, uh, when we talk about eight event wins between the Bucks and Gazelles, uh, certainly, uh, you know, there were other uh, placers for you and just a huge field, like we said, class AA, A, and B. And, uh, you know, you got to believe that uh, class A and class B, well, outside of uh, Sioux Falls Christian, uh, that's a great chance uh, for them uh, to see competition that they, you know, will not see uh, probably uh, well, with maybe the exception of Howard Wood, but the uh, entries are limited in that. And then they have uh, their conference meet, their region meets, and the state meet uh, coming up as well. It's just a special evening. I mean, people look at the the schedule and they see, oh, we had 35 heats of the 200-meter dash. That's <laughs> a lot of heat. Yep. But when you, when, you, when you got it organized, when it's working well, and the workers that we have do a phenomenal job and are so much appreciated, it's kind of fun to just sit back and watch heat after heat after heat after heat of of people when it's when it's running smoothly. And uh, I, there's not many meets around this area of the state that uh, allows kids the, the unlimited entries that we allow there. Um, um, when when things are going smoothly, it's, it's kind of fun sitting back and and just watching that uh, take place. So. Um, I don't know if it's too much of a good thing or not, but uh, here on Friday as we're recording this, Joe, as you know, we just got done with our middle school meet, which right. is very similar to our high school meet. Uh, we had 17 teams there yesterday. I 
can't remember exactly how many we have middle school there today, six or seven, but um, uh, my old bones are feeling it a little bit too here today. <laughs> We've had uh, 18 hours of track in about the last uh, 32 hours, so I'm uh, even I've had my fill here in the last couple of days, but it, it's been it's been phenomenal. And uh, last night was very special. Thursday night watching the the Bucks and Gazelles, that's for sure. All right, now uh, coming up uh, next week, busy week for sure. Next Tuesday, on the road to Mitchell for a triangular with Mitchell and O'Gorman. Yep, kind of in a unique spot in the season here. We're obviously kind of prepping for Howard Wood this weekend. But uh, we get to kind of do some special stuff a little bit on Tuesday is how we're going to focus at it. We just haven't had the opportunity to maybe, uh, you know, heighten our medley relays both on the boys' side and our girls' side. Um, our girls are, you know, we're hoping to run a really strong time there, stack that thing up a little bit. Our uh, boys, um, it's been my intention all year to get our medley crank in there. Uh, you know, Yankton High School's got a really nice medley relay record at 336 and some change, um, which is a nice medley record. Uh, The the sprint medley in South Dakota is a 200, a 200, a 400, and an 800. But that is not an unattainable school record. And, um, you know, my goal coming into the season, just knowing with our personnel that we have, uh, was to break that school record multiple times. And uh, we're hopefully going to be able to take a shot at that. On uh, We've taken a shot at it already. Uh, but uh, you know we ran a 3:35 at th- or 3:45 uh, is our uh, top time right now. Um, but uh, you know we're hoping we can get that down on Tuesday, and then maybe also be able to take a crack at it at Howard Wood. And then uh, anytime our boys mile relay steps on the track, uh, we're looking to continue to improve our time there, no matter what lineup we have in there. I'm still not sure what our strongest lineup is there. Um, and then also our girls mile relay will keep cranking on that and you know we'll give kids the opportunity to kind of pick and choose a couple of events that they want to do in Mitchell Um, I'm a little partial in an odd way to to Mitchell's track there because I got to uh, do a lot of the planning on that in the stadium of course when I was in Mitchell with uh, Joe Quinnell and um, it's just a nice neighborhood environment that kind of like Crane would have if Crane had a track around it uh, like it did in the old days with uh, Smokey Joe and so forth there. But mm-hmm. um, So, you know, if it's a nice evening at Joe Quinnell Field on Tuesday night, um, which it's forecast to be and it's kind of sheltered in there, we could. that's a fast track, which is exciting to, to have some fun there. All right, and then uh, next Friday and Saturday, uh, the annual Howard Wood Dakota Relays at uh, Howard Wood Field in Sioux Falls, and then uh, I'm sure sending some athletes to the O'Gorman Invitational next Friday morning as well. Yep, uh, between Howard Wood and O'Gorman, um, we're hoping you know we can probably have about 70 or 80 kids compete on those two days is our is our goal there, and uh, you know our, our, our kind of. Uh, not mentioned our throws here, but our throws are continuing to develop shot, discus, javelin. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're, we're developing some throwers there. Uh, Lance Dannenbrink. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I chuckle a little bit just because he doesn't get to practice it very much, but uh, he continues to improve in the, in the javelin. I'm uh, misplacing where he's sitting in the state right now, but he's uh, in the top 15. He threw 144 the other day here on Thursday. Um, we've got uh, Caden Waverink, who's doing a nice job uh, in the discus, uh, continues to PR. He's knocking on that 140-foot throw here, which you start doing that all of a sudden. Um, that gets you qualified for the state meet, maybe making finals. gets you some points in the conference as well, so he's continuing to work there. Um, our uh, shot putter in uh, Matthew Sheldon, he's starting to knock on that 50-foot mark again same thing maybe squeak out some points at the conference meet and get into the finals at the state meet um and we just you were just we got so many throwers uh, on the girls and the boys side that are uh, just pushing each other and i want to uh, mention those uh, folks as well uh, dominic Antrobus uh had a really nice uh, some prs uh, for himself a senior thrower for us on uh, thursday too so um our kids young old varsity jv sophomore freshman however you want to term them um all that you can do and this is what we challenge the kids to do every week is just get better all right well 
We've got a lot of track and field to talk about in a couple of weeks, uh, Jeff, as there's no show, but uh, uh, anxious to see the Bucks and Gazelles at uh, Howard Wood uh, from the booth uh, next Friday and Saturday. Appreciate the visit this morning here on Breakfast with the Coaches, and we'll talk about uh, Howard Wood, uh, O'Gorman, and the Triangular coming up in a couple of weeks. Thank you for so much for your support and uh, recognizing our kids, Joe. Appreciate it. All right, Jeff Gross, the track and field coach at Yankton High School here on Breakfast with the Coaches. We'll be back with Yankton softball coach Joe Muth after this. And Trovis Agency in partnership with Colonial Life, a partnership to help your business grow and protect you when the unexpected happens. Service second to none. Willing to take the extra steps to make sure you have a partner to help you through the claims process. Increased employee retention and attracting quality talent. That's the reason you would offer voluntary benefits, which are supplements to major medical through Antrobus Agency, a family business to help your family and employees. Antrobus Agency. Are you looking for the next great career opportunity? Then make it SureCo, a staple of the Yankton community for nearly 30 years. SureCo offers career opportunities in engineering, sales, marketing, accounting, tarp and metal fabrication, shipping, and more. Enjoy a year-around climate condition facility, 401k options, affordable health, dental, and vision care, paid time off, and 10 paid holidays. Make SureCo your next great opportunity. Learn more at SureCo.com careers. Not all funerals are the same, and neither are funeral homes. This is Paul Wentz of the Wentz and Ray Funeral Home and Cremation Service in Yankton. A death in a family is one of life's most significant events. We understand the importance of such an event and realize there are no second chances. We will guide you through all your options so you are comfortable with the services chosen. Our experience, professionalism, compassion, and attention to detail will ensure everything is perfect. Winston Ray Funeral Home, Yankton. Sports injuries can be the result of competitive activities, but can also happen by just participating in leisure activities too. If you're experiencing pain as the result of your chosen activity, consider chiropractic care. I'm Dr. Mackenzie Erlinson with First Chiropractic Centers. We have experienced chiropractors that work with sports injuries every day. Our treatment options are aimed to minimize pain, reduce recovery time, and reduce risk of future injuries. Visit First Chiropractic Centers, making life better, one adjustment at a time. Breakfast with the Coaches on ESPN 101.5 AM 1570 online at kvtk.com. Continuing on with our Yankton High School coaches on the line with us now, Yankton softball coach Jill Muth. And Jill, a busy week uh, indeed, and it started Monday with a makeup game hosting O'Gorman at uh, Sir Toma Park, and O'Gorman comes away with a 14-3 to win. Yep, it has been a busy week for sure. This is we're looking at game four today against uh, Aberdeen. But yep, we played, we hosted uh, O'Gorman on a makeup game from the beginning of the season, and uh, they came out and their bats were hot, and we uh, we got beaten that one. All right, and then uh, turn right around, hit the road Tuesday to Watertown, and a nice bounce back win on Tuesday, eleven to six over the Arrows. Yep, I told the girls Monday night, you know, after the game, I said, this one sucks. You know, losing's not fun, and that was a tough one. But I said, we got three more games this week, you know. So I said, we got to flush this one, and we got to move on, and we got to get ready for Watertown tomorrow because that's another one we got to go get a win. And they came out Tuesday night, and they were they were excited before the game. They said, hey, we got to get going. We got to come out with some energy. We got to come out with some excitement, and we got to get after it. And they did. You know, they, they we had a good game out there in Watertown. All right, and then uh, Thursday – in a makeup game with uh, Roosevelt, uh, what well, only took uh, three innings. Uh, the Gazelles had the bats out, winning 18 to nothing. Yep, we uh, we had a lot of good at bats against Roosevelt. We took uh, six walk, or no, excuse me, seven walks in the game, and we had nine hits. And we just came out right away in the first inning and scored nine runs and got after it, and then uh, kind of kept our foot on the gas pedal, and uh, we were done in three innings. So it was a nice outing for us that last night. All right, I'm going to put you on the spot, to Jill. Uh, talk about, uh, well, talk about the gals that had a good week uh, at the plate. Yeah, you bet. So we've got, uh, as a team, we're hitting 377 through eight games. That's pretty good batting average. And, you know, looking at it, we got, you know, three or four girls over, um, hitting over 400 right now for us. We got Brooklyn Townsend hitting 500. And then we got uh, 
um, Ellie Fieser and Cam Kolesky and Emma Herbold all hitting over 400 for us. So we are got four girls really swinging the bat really well. And we've got a couple girls also just right there. You know, Tori Velik's just under 400. And, um, you know, we got some girls kind of getting hot and getting some, getting their bats going. So, so far right now, I, we've not had a lot of trouble scoring runs. So I, hopefully I, that continues. Yeah, and uh, I guess I haven't asked enough. And, uh, you know, I really hasn't become uh, relevant until now. Now that, uh, you know, the meat of the schedule is uh, coming up, but the Gazelles are 5-3. and three. But uh, talk about your pitching uh, so far. Talk about your thoughts. Yeah, so far we've had Grace Burns on the hill, and she's had some games where she's been really good. You know, she was really good against Roosevelt the other night. She's had some games where, you know, she's had a few walks and things got away from a little bit. The O'Gorman game was kind of a tough night for her. But, you know, she battles out there, and she keeps after it. And and, uh, hopefully we're going to end up ahead ahead of more often than we don't. So she's done a nice job for us. On this Saturday, Jill, Aberdeen Central comes to town for a 2 o'clock game at Sertoma Park. Yep, and we're just hoping to continue the hot bats, and uh, hopefully we can get Grace a good outing out there on the mound for us and uh, go get another win. All right, and then on Monday, to start off the month of May, as we mentioned, uh, the meat of the schedule uh, certainly coming up, uh, on the road to Vermilion at uh, Lions Park uh, in Vermilion, and uh, as a uh, Later on is kind of a, a sneak peek. Uh, Coach uh, Van Asprin of Vermilion said, well, uh, the Yankton girls and the Vermilion girls are quite familiar with one another. Is that true? That is true. I know some of the Vermilion girls play on one of our you know, club teams. I think uh, the team that quite a few of our starters play on, that Brad Moser has coached for the last few years. And so I know they have a lot of familiarity with each other. And so I think that's probably both good and, you know, sometimes not so great. So hopefully it works out in our favor. All right. And then, of course, uh, next weekend or next Friday and Saturday, uh, a scheduled tournament uh, in Sioux Falls. But, of course, uh, you know, uh, your games at home with Sturgis and Rapid City Stevens uh, were postponed uh, due to the weather. Uh, Supposedly, they're coming up with a schedule that would uh, probably wait until Monday to be announced to uh, see who has to make up uh, what. But uh, it would probably be hopefully a good weekend next weekend uh, to uh, to finally get uh, caught up. Yep, and like you said, we don't know for sure the schedule. We're kind of waiting to see who gets through what for the weekend. And originally they had thought about, you know, having a tournament and just, you know, playing some games. But we have a lot of teams that have a lot of games to make up. I think I can't remember what uh, Mr. Morris said, but I think maybe Aberdeen has a handful of games, three, four, five games to make up. Wow. So we're just going to kind of try to use that, that weekend at uh, in Sioux Falls and just try to get games made up. So they're just waiting to see what gets played this week and then go from there. All right. So the Gazelles are 5-3 and three on the season. Again, at Vermillion coming up on Monday. Jill, we appreciate the visit this morning. Here on Breakfast with the Coaches, no show, but uh, we will catch up with you and Gazelle Softball coming up in a couple weeks. All right, sounds good, Joe. Thank you for your coverage of Yankton High School and Yankton Gazelle Softball. We appreciate it. Jill Muth, the softball coach at Yankton High School here on Breakfast with the Coaches. Another timeout. We'll be back with Yankton baseball coach Drew Lawrence on Breakfast with the Coaches. Meanwhile, at Vache. Josh, did you hear what Jessie did this weekend? No. She won Yankton's first annual thumb wrestling tournament. In the championship match, she pinned her competition in five seconds. No way. I also heard she can assemble parts at Vache with one hand and thumb wrestle the person sitting next to her with the other hand. You serious? Yup, and she always wins. What's your unique talent? Check out Vache's new starting wage of seventeen seventy-five per hour. Apply online today at vachecareers.com. That's vachecareers.com. Hello, here's to welcoming moments, big and small, embracing the unexpected, savoring life. At Avera, our nationally recognized health system will be right here with you, ready for anything. We listen to your goals and help you achieve them with care and coverage. We'll move you forward through sickness and health and every milestone in between. Avera, moving health forward. Learn more at avera.org forward. 
The Riverfront Event Center in Yankton is the perfect venue for your wedding. Along with huge banquet rooms, the Riverfront offers motel accommodations all in the same building. And they allow multi-day rentals so you can get your decorating done one day and get dressed for your wedding another and bring the whole family at the same time. Ask about the brewery for your events too. It's all part of the Riverfront Event Center experience in Yankton. Check their website, riverfronteventcenter.com, for more information. You deserve to get good service and great rates. At State Farm, we get it, and we're here to help. Because with every State Farm policy, you get good neighbor service and surprisingly great rates. So what are you waiting for? Get going and talk to a local State Farm agent about your surprisingly great rates today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Individual premiums will vary by customer. All applicants subject to State Farm underwriting requirements. When you want the real deal, call State Farm agent Roy Wilcox in Yankton today. Breakfast with the coaches on ESPN 101.5 AM 1570 online at kvtk.com. Continuing on with our Yankton High School coaches. On the line with us is Yankton High School baseball coach Drew Lawrence. And Drew, let's uh, talk about a uh, big doubleheader sweep uh, on Tuesday of uh, Roosevelt uh, winning 5-4 to four and 7-6. to six. And you mentioned on the program uh, last uh, Saturday uh, Roosevelt is no slouch. No, they're not. Um, if you look at their batting averages, they're not great coming into the game that we played them, but they had played a really tough schedule. Um, but I, I, you know, kind of like what I said, I knew they were going to be really good, and the top of their lineup was really good. And, and their pitchers were attacking the zone and, and had a lot more velocity than we were expecting. So we kind of had an idea that we were going to go into, um, you know, a little bit of a dogfight, and, and that's what ended up being. I mean, they're back and forth games. We had to come back in both games to do it. So we were really happy to sneak out of there with the sweep because, um, you know, a couple things don't go your way, and it could have been the other way. So, yeah, we were happy with everything that happened. All right, uh, talk about uh, your guys on the mound and uh, the guys at the plate that uh, that had good games for you Tuesday night. Well, Drew did a really good job. Um, he just, I know I've said it before, but he just, he does what Drew does. Uh, he's been our number one pitcher for three years. He went out there and competed and threw strikes. And, you know, he kind of made a mistake defensively on the mound. Otherwise, he might not have given up any runs. Um, but he, I mean, I think he's thrown 24 innings for us this year already on the season, um, and he's, he just wants to keep getting the ball. Like he, I told him he wasn't going to be thrown this weekend, and, and he was not too happy about it. But, yeah. you know, we're, we always go to him. I mean, he's going to be our rock. Um, so he did a really good job. Um, and then in game two, pitching-wise, we started with Matthew Sheldon. There, we had some bad luck in the in the first inning, and he gave up four right away. Um, or no, three right away, and, and, you know, he kept him to four in his whole outing that he ended up. So he came back and battled hard, and he threw a lot of pitches. Um, and then Mark Cottle came in and has been doing or did what he has been doing, and he shut the door. Um, Mark still doesn't have an – he has a zero ERA, so he keeps attacking the zone. and keeps um, using his defense. And so our pitchers have done a really good job. We've only used like six pitchers so far this year. We're going to have to use more as the season goes on, including this weekend. Um, but our, those guys did a really good job. Um, and then hitting-wise, you know, the first game was very fun. Uh, fun way to end. You know, we came down to tied 4-4 four to four in the in the bottom of the seventh, and um, Lucas Kamstroff came up and did something that I've never been a part of as I've, as a coach. I've, I've been a part of it as a player where someone was able to hit a walk-off home run. It was fun playing with Cole Knippling at Mount Marty because he did it all the time. But right. as a coach, <laughs> yeah. as a coach, I've never never experienced that. So Lucas got into a count that he wanted, 2-0 pitch, and he, he hit a no-doubter, um, and the boys got to celebrate. So that was fun. But our top of the lineup keeps going. Um, they keep, and We have five, five guys that are hitting over 400 right now. Um, you know, the three Rikens are Mac Drew and rugby. They're all hitting over 400. And then Mark Cottle and, and Lucas Kamshoff are all hit, hitting over 400. Um, if those guys can keep doing that, obviously we're going to be successful. And, and, you know, the guys who um, are in the bottom of the order, if they continue to do what they've been doing with really good at bats um, and driving in runs, then, you know, it's going to be a successful season for them. All right. So the Bucks stand at 8-1 and one on the season. 
And on the Saturday, uh, Drew, on the road up to Sioux Falls at the uh, Sanford Sports Complex, uh, well, a doubleheader, uh, Sioux Falls, Washington, and O'Gorman. Yep, Sioux Falls, Washington, we played them at home. They're a really good squad. Um, they, they're, in my opinion, one of the top teams in our state. They're balanced from top to bottom in their batting order. Their pitchers are good. Um, we haven't faced O'Gorman yet, but they already have a couple of, of pretty good wins. So anytime we play a Sioux Falls school, regardless of the sport, we know it's going to be tough. So we just, we just go out there and we try and take care of what we can take care of, and, and hopefully the, the ball rolls our way, I guess. All right, and then coming up uh, on Monday, as you start the month of May, Jefferson. Same thing with Jefferson. Um, they're very talented. Last year was their first year for uh, every sport, right? But for right. baseball, um, they they had a lot of talent but couldn't figure out a way to win a lot of games last year. And this year, the talent's still there, and they're figuring out how to win games. So it's going to be tough. They've uh, They've got good coaches, and their pitching staff's good. Any, I mean, the schedule from here on out for us is, is tough. Um, it's either Sioux Falls, Brookings, or Brandon. So is, as far as what we got now with this, this class, the classes, um, they're good. So we're going to hopefully go out there. And, you know, luckily we're senior, we're very senior heavy. So these guys keep finding ways to win games um, in different ways. And that's usually what seniors do. So hopefully they can continue that. Um, but either way, they're having a really good year, and, and, you know, they're having a lot of fun, the boys are. All right, so the Bucks at 8-1. and one. Again, two games on Saturday, one on Monday. And then, uh, Drew, of course, uh, we don't have a show next week, but we will catch up with you on May 13th and talk about more Buck baseball here on Breakfast with the Coaches. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. Drew Lawrence, the baseball coach at Yankton High School, wrapping up our Yankton coaches here on Breakfast with the Coaches on ESPN 101.5 AM 1570. KVTK, Vermilion Yankton, a proud service of Five Star Communications. We'll start off our Vermilion High School coaches. Coming up, track and field coach Lenny Bilberg will join us on Breakfast with the Coaches. When was the last time you got new flooring? If you can't remember or if you're just ready for a change, it's time for you to visit Larson Carpet in downtown Yankton. With an expert installation team waiting in the wings, they'll get your floor outfitted hassle-free with the style that you love. If you aren't sure of what you want, take a tour of the showroom to see what's new and what's timeless from the carpet professionals. Proudly serving Yankton and the surrounding communities for over 40 years. At Larson Carpet in downtown Yankton, we've got you covered. If we have learned anything in the past year, it's that we need leaders in our community who can make an impact on future generations as an educator. Here at Mount Marty, we want to prepare you to be successful in helping every child learn and grow to their fullest capacity. On the MMU campus, you'll create personal relationships with advisors and fellow educators that are irreplaceable. So, are you ready to make an impact? Visit us today at Mount Marty University and start seeing yourself here. Get started at mountmarty.edu. All Seasons Power Sports in Yankton can help make your life easier and more fun. Stop in and see their complete lineup, including ATVs, side-by-sides, pontoons, fishing and pleasure boats, as well as motorcycles, other watercraft, and much more. All Seasons Power Sports is your authorized Yamaha and Honda dealer. Check out their full inventory at allseasonspowersportsinc.com. All Seasons Power Sports, on your way to the lake in Yankton. At Elwood Family Dental Care, we see patients from 1 to 101. Come experience our gentle touch while you relax in our massage chairs and watch TV. Patients are loving our new digital scanner. No more ooey, gooey, gaggy impressions. We'd love to meet you, and we're always accepting new patients. Call 665-2530 to make an appointment. Elwood Family Dental Care, where we take care of the entire family. And back with more Breakfast with the Coaches on ESPN 101.5 AM 1570 online at kvtk.com. We're brought to you by our Yankton and Vermilion Sportscaster Club members who bring you Bucks and Gazelles and Tanager Athletics on Five Star Communications, also Five Star Streaming, 
and Vermilion Streaming as we start off with our Vermilion High School coaches on the line with us now, Vermilion Track and Field Coach Lenny Bilberg. And Lenny, boy, a, a busy week when you have a meet on Tuesday and then on Thursday. Let's go to Tuesday, first of all, at the Dakota Valley Invitational where the Tanager boys pick up two event wins and the girls pick up two event wins, plus uh, many other places as well. You know, it really was a great week for us. Um, we, across the board, um, we didn't exactly try to overtax our kids knowing we had a, a busy week, but the um, kids went out and ran hard. Our sprinters looked really great. Um, James Drake and Grace Chosey are leading that sprint crew, and they really are getting better each week. And um, while we didn't win the sprint relays, we're ranked, you know, right in those top three or four for all of our uh, sprints, four by one, four by two, and it's really that junior leadership that makes the big difference um, there. And um, James ran another great hundred, and we're, we just know that we're in the right place where we need to be at the end of April. And um, then you go to the distance, and our distance girls, our four by eight laid down a great time, um, a 10-minute flat. Um, that's pretty early in the season, and that's a great place to be in the four by eight. Um, right in the top three on this in the state right now for that. And then, you know, we even had some great throws along with that, and you put all that together with our little mini squad. We're, we're really um, having a great season and really proud of those kids. Our distance crew is really coming along. Callie Radigan had a great 3,200. Um, Lydia Anderson is really co- coming into kind of her best ever. She ran a, um, a great opening for the 4 by 8 and um, it just makes us so exciting to see that happening. And then you go to the boys' side, and actually the same thing is true. Our distance boys had a really great 4 by 8 um, um, and that's fun to see them all coming together. Um, some of the kids were a little nicked up coming into the season, so we've been kind of babying them uh, along. And, and now um, we seem to be ready to go for, as we call, May championship season and ready for that opportunity. And so that that's really cool there. Um, the, the throws for the boys have been um, starting to improve. We're really young there, but Raleigh French had a, a huge PR for him in the shot put. And then you have our young freshman boy um, jumpers and sprinters, and um, they're getting better and better each day and learning how to compete. Um, Ian Job had a great um, triple jump in his first time out. And so that's really a great opportunity um, for young kids to get some uh, jumps or throws or sprints in and make a difference for us. And um, and then, you know, we head straight on into Yankton after that. And I got to tell you, the weather was nice, um, but we had a little rain, a little wind, a little sun, and right. a little bit of everything. And um, our kids, it doesn't seem to matter. They just put on their spikes and say, let's go. And that's exactly what we want at this point of the year. And then uh, Thursday, the first Dakota relays at Williams Field uh, in Yankton. Boy, a huge field, including double A, A, and B, as we were uh, mentioning with uh, Yankton track and field coach Jeff Gross. Uh, you know, it's it's a great illustration, uh, of, you know, and and for your kids, you know, to see that kind of competition from double A and from class B as well as class A because, uh, you know, uh, Quite frankly, besides uh, their Class A counterparts, uh, they won't see that kind of competition all year long. No, it's really good for us to see other teams. Um, we know South Dakota, uh, Sioux Falls Christian is always going to be very good. We know that that's going to be part of it. Uh, but, you know, Yankton really has put together a nice squad, so it was fun to um, have some challenges there, both in, in really every event. Uh, um, there, Dubrook came to run, and um, they were becoming a Class B powerhouse, um, formerly an A team, and uh, it was really fun for our kids. And but across the board, we kind of set them up in a few events where we knew they could do well, and and they really shined. Um, I have to mention Lydia Anderson; she had a tremendous day, um, huge, huge opening in the four by eight, her fastest opening leg ever, um, probably by about 15 seconds. Um, then she went out and ran the mile and, a, and a, a PR time for her. And then she ran the two mile as well, kind of a really big day for her. And um, three PRs um, for uh, just really a ninth grader, even though she's been around a long time. It um, put a lot of smiles on a lot of kids' face because they're starting to see 
the training they did all winter, the training they've been working on this spring has really come to fruition. Um, Taylor Barta had a great 4x8. We ran another great time there. Um, and now it's just for us to get ready um, to start peaking. And, and our kids are, of course, they're tired. They're supposed to be tired in April. Uh, but we want to get to that peak phase in really the next four weeks, and then we're done, which is really the craziest thing how quickly the season goes. Um, on the boys' side, actually, Lydia's brother, Henry, had a great day. He had a great lead off to the boys' 4x8. Um, he he ran the mile, and he came back in the two-mile, and he had a, a tremendous day as well. And those kids that are saying, I want to go out there and, and show what I can do, um, kind of a copy of maybe what they'll run at a state meet and, and see how much they can ask their body or we can still recover um, and go from there. But we had other performances. Um, Jack Freeberg continues to be a, a stalwart senior for us. He jumps into any relay and tries to make a difference, and we're so we're so glad to have him, but we'll be sad to see him go. Um, Johnny Fleming is coming into um, shape. And then I go right back to those freshman boys. Um, they really um, are going to be a great group of kids. They work hard together. They want to be uh, successful, and that's one of the huge steps to getting there. And they've got some quickness. Um, we get a little muscle mass on those boys, and they're really going to um, be fun to watch in the future. Um, Hunter Morris, another of our freshman distance runners, ran well. Um, and it really is exciting each day to go to practice and to take the kids to a meet because they're excited. Um, track and field is fun, and, and that makes everything easier um, across the board. But just a fun way to kind of finish April and move into May. All right. And now, uh, Lenny, uh, we move into the month of May, as you mentioned, and the uh, championship season. You know, you can certainly throw in uh, Howard Wood along with the DAC-12 in the Region 4A meet. Uh, by the way, DAC-12 and well, is uh, at the uh, – Little Bridge Track Complex at uh, USD, so that'll be a a, a great mm-hmm. meet to uh, see. And then Region 4A is being held at T area, and of course the three day South Dakota State meet uh, coming up over Memorial Day holiday weekend. But uh, next Friday and Saturday, Howard Wood, and also next Friday is the Agorman Invitational. So I imagine uh, that'll be a, a you know a great opportunity uh, to to get in a lot of entries there. Yeah, it is. It's going to be a fun week. We actually kind of snuck in. We're going to add Beersford on Tuesday, oh. um, give some of our extra uh, kids one more chance to compete where we have a few more entries we can add. And then we have O'Gorman um, for all those that aren't going to qualify for Howard Wood. And um, yeah, looking at my Howard Wood entries, we hope we get everybody in, but um, we're going to have a great week. It, it's really, really fun to see. Um, kids that have, even though they're young, have been with us, have have really come into their own and um, are excited about it. They're talking about it. They're looking ahead, and um, some of their they're telling their dreams, and um, that's what May is about for me. If you've ever come to South Dakota, you know Howard Wood is a great mark of how you're going to do. Can you stay healthy till the end of the month to make to the state meet? But we are, we think we're in a great place, and we hope. Um, you know, all the things go right, and we'll get a couple kinks worked out at Beersford with some relay exchanges and then head to, um, uh, well, Sioux Falls on Friday and Saturday. All right, Lenny, we appreciate the visit this morning here on Breakfast with the Coaches. And, again, uh, no show uh, next week, but excited to see your boys and girls up at uh, Howard Wood next uh, Friday and Saturday. So we will catch up and talk about a lot of track and field when we visit on May 13th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks, Joe. All right. Lenny Bilberg, the track and field coach, starting off our Vermilion High School coaches here on Breakfast with the Coaches. We'll be back with boys tennis coach Carrie Jensen after this. You've all heard of the Maytag Man, but have you heard of the Murph Man? He's your local Maytag service professional, delivering sparkling dishes, fresh clothing, and ice-cold milk with top-quality Maytag appliances. Or if your current appliance breaks down, he is on it. Murph, Murph, he's your man from Murph's Appliance in downtown Vermilion. Big city selection, small town service. You'll find the Murph Man at Murph's Appliance in downtown Vermilion on Main Street. I'm Lane Sawatsky from... Yankton, South Dakota originally, and I'm the owner at SWAT Chiropractic and Rehab. 
I love going out to the lake, visiting the river, kind of turned into a river out here as of late. That's another thing you leave Yankton and you take for granted. All the years, all the days out on the lake, out on the river with buddies, and that's another great thing that I, I really missed. And another thing that kind of brought us back to is just being out on the water, absorbing some, some sunlight and, and hanging out. Come thrive with us at YanktonSD.com. Johnson Feet has served the area for over 100 years with the goal to continue this local, family-owned business for the long haul. Johnson Feet is proud to be a part of the Vermilion community with a facility ready to repair, wash, and sell tires for all trucks and vehicles. Johnson Feet has room for drivers, too. If interested, contact the friendly folks at Johnson Feet. They have over 200 company trucks to deliver products throughout the country with over 35 company employees. Johnson Feet, 1218 Compton Court, north side of the Highway 50 bypass, Vermilion. You can feel beautiful in your own skin. Candy's Couture offers intimates to make you feel your best. Whether you want to feel beautiful for a night or you just want to feel frisky. Candy's Couture also offers mastectomy bras, prosthetics, and nursing bras. Candy's Couture, 17 West Main Street, Vermilion. We are beautiful in every aspect life throws at us. Back with more Breakfast with the Coaches on ESPN 101.5 AM 1570 online at kvtk.com. Let's roll on with our Vermilion High School coaches on the line with us is boys tennis coach Kerry Jensen. Coach Jensen, a busy week uh, for your guys. And it uh, all started uh, on Tuesday, uh, a triangular with uh, Lennox and the Yankton JVs. Uh, Lennox wins nine to nothing, and the Yankton JVs win uh, six to three. Yeah, that was um, that was a busy day for us. Um, it was good to see uh, Lennox since they're in our conference and um, our Class A division. Um, they have a really good team. Coach Plank has um, a couple of sons on that team. That he's a tennis pro, so they know what they're doing. But I was really proud of our boys, though, as we got some games. Um, we're improving, even though. Yes, we got the loss. Um, we're not getting blanked, you know, 6-0, 6-0. It's more like 6-2, 6-3, 6-4. So we're getting some games in there. All right. And then on Wednesday, traveled to Mitchell to take on Huron, a double-A school, and uh, lost 9 nothing. Yep. And that was another one. Uh, Huron's a really good team. They have about 84 guys out for tennis wow. there. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, my number five, Hayden Fogelman, actually went to tiebreaker and lost. Um, 10-7 in a tiebreaker um, against their number five singles player. So it was a good day. I'm glad we got that in because that was a makeup from the week before. All right. And then on Thursday, uh, travel to Sioux Falls to take on Sioux Falls Christian. Sioux Falls Christian gets the win 9 nothing. Yep. And that was another good uh, match for us. My number two, Lucas Green, uh, lost 6-4, 6-3. So got a lot of games off their number two, which we are proud of. And I was able to bring all 25 of my boys to that one because that Tomar Park is that brand new facility there. So it was really nice that everyone got a chance to play. How is that uh, facility? Uh, uh, earlier in the show, Coach Haig from uh, Yankton says, uh, I think uh, they're going up to see that facility uh, on Tuesday. I understand it's a pretty nice place. Yeah, it, uh, it was well done. The city of the Sioux Falls, they, they did it well. There's 12 courts there. And it's across down the middle, so you can uh, view from numerous places and go out. And there's gates at each spot, so you don't have to interrupt um, a court. So well done by Sioux Falls to build that facility. And it's nice. Our state tournament will be held there, too. All right. Well, talk about then um, on Friday, yesterday, um, came over to uh, Yankton, uh, you know, mostly uh, middle school and uh, high school uh, event for your guys. Yeah, it was more of a JV, uh, yeah, middle school group. We started this a few years ago because uh, Yankton hosts that big middle school track meet over there. So we thought it'd be kind of neat if the, the middle school tennis was going on at the same time since it's right at that facility. Um, but the last two years, we've actually been inside because of yeah. the weather. We haven't been able to be out. But that was really good. A lot of my boys got lots of matches in and saw some success there. And um, they just want to continue playing tennis, which is good. All right, looking ahead, uh, uh, Carrie, again, uh, we don't have a show next week, but uh, we'll talk in a couple weeks. On Monday, uh, a triangular in uh, Mitchell with Mitchell and Pierre, and then on uh, Monday, May 8th, 
uh, a quad in Sioux Falls, and then make up with Laverne, Minnesota, on uh, May 11th. And uh, by the time we talk uh, in a couple weeks, May 13th, we'll be previewing uh, the Class A state meet at uh, Tomar Park in Sioux Falls on Monday and Tuesday, May 15th and 16th. So things are wrapping up quite quickly. Yeah, that's what happens. You know, it's a tough spring at the beginning. You're kind of postponing and moving stuff, and then all of a sudden, boom, it's done. <laughs> so yeah, it's going to go quick. Yeah, a lot of, uh, <laughs> lot of tennis, though, coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks, and we'll uh, certainly catch up uh, with you uh, coming up uh, in a couple of weeks on May 13th and talk all about it and preview the tanagers at the uh, State A meet. Carrie, thanks for the visit this morning here on Breakfast with the Coaches. We'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. Sounds great. Appreciate it, Joe. All right. Kerry Jensen, the boys' tennis coach at Vermilion High School here on Breakfast with the Coaches. We'll be back with girls' golf coach Kirk Hogan after this. Here's what people say about Carlson's Body Shop in Beersford. One customer, quote, absolutely fantastic service. Another, Mike and Dan Carlson have a great family business. One more, we've been going to the shop since we've moved to town. Quality repair for reasonable money. For all your vehicle needs, count on Carlson's Body Shop in Beersford. And check them out on Facebook. Bring it down to Carlson's Body Shop, your complete car care center. What's worse than having to spend all day at the laundromat? A lot of them are hot, sticky, and smell bad. In Vermilion, you want to avoid that situation. Yuck. Eastgate Maytag Laundry is super clean and open 24 hours a day. Eastgate has super giant 60-pound washers and giant 70-pound dryers to make your wash day fly by. Eastgate is also located near many local restaurants if you want to grab a quick bite. Next time your laundry is piled up, pile in to Eastgate Maytag Laundry, located next to Jimmy John's on Cherry Street in Vermilion. Let's be real. Insurance is complicated. Policies are confusing. The options are endless and hard to compare. This is where Fishback Insurance Agency comes in. We are an independent local agency that compares providers and finds you the best policy at the best price for home, auto, business, farm, life, health, and more. How's that for a plan? Contact us for a free quote at fishbackinsurance.com. Insurance products are not deposits and may lose value. They're not bank guaranteed or insured by FDIC or any government agency. Runnings in Vermilion is here for you to lean on like a trusted friend. We work hard each day to stock our shelves with brands and products that are built for value and purpose. Running sells a wide selection of trusted brands of sporting goods, men and women's clothing featuring Carhartt and Wrangler. There's footwear, pet supplies, housewares, tools, farm supplies, lawn and garden supplies, toys and outdoor equipment. Additionally, this store is an authorized dealer of Honda Power Equipment. Runnings, your home, farm, and outdoor store, Vermilion. Breakfast with the Coaches on ESPN 101.5 AM 1570 online at kvtk.com. Continuing on with our Vermilion High School coaches. On the line with us now, Vermilion Girls Golf Coach Kirk Hogan. And Hoagie, just one thing to talk about from this past week. Uh, this past Monday, down at Two Rivers, the 12-team Dakota Valley Invitational. And uh, your gals were second with a 355 to Sioux Falls Christian. Yeah, and that's, you know, it's sort of the same old, same old. We've been having some great competitions with Sioux Falls Christian here the last couple of years, and that's sort of how it went all last year. It was just sort of them and us and then a couple other teams behind us, and, and really a good day for us. I mean, Christian shoots a 348, we have a 355, and obviously uh, we're going to come back and evaluate that, and we did, and uh, we can shoot better than that, but uh they're probably saying the same thing. They can, too. <laughs> and there's a couple other teams uh, in our region and in our conference that are uh, doing very well right now, too. Dakota Valley, 363, and uh, Canton, 368, with our old friend uh, Jeff Kyman coaching them and then Rod Slater with Dakota Valley. Um, it, was a, it was a good day for us, a uh, good day for the young ones. You know, Ronnie Wilharm uh, ended up getting actually second with an 83. And uh, she's only a seventh grader. And, you know, and Steph, uh, Car Stephanie Carr, uh, fifth with an 85. And then uh, we end up counting Emma Willart with a 93. And then Georgia Johnson with a 94. And uh, not a bad score when you go out on the road and you got the first uh, competition with all the different teams 
competing. It's a little different. We lost two golfers last year, but we gained two really good golfers. And uh, you still got to see the big bright lights a couple times, and uh, that's that's the start of that. You know, so that that was a good good start, Joe. That's right. And the JV pick up uh, first place Monday, Hoagie, with a 375. Uh, Taylor Rovers with an 84. Yeah, that, that was uh, yeah. Taylor. I think would have gotten fourth. I think in the varsity, if uh, if she would have been playing varsity that day. She's a seventh grader and uh, boy, very well mentally, just really good with it. You know, and that comes from her parents and the the, the coaching and all the basketball that she's played. But 84 for. The seventh grader there and uh, played her JV that day, and, and uh, that would have made a difference there. And then after that, it was we had fifth place with Katie Neighbors uh, with a 96. 375, I think, would have gotten us, uh, I believe, fifth, I think, in the varsity competition. You know, and you know how I feel, Joe. I, I don't like it calling varsity and JV, but yeah, that's the way it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is, no doubt. No doubt. Well, uh, Hoagie, like we said, after just one event uh, this past week, you have two, well, one a regularly scheduled one and one a makeup coming up Tuesday, the Dell Rapids Invitational at Rocky Run. Yes, and that will be, we prepared for that this week, obviously, and reviewed where we were at, you know, after the invite down at Dakota Valley. And that will be a big one up there. That's always probably the biggest no, probably not. Well, West Central's pretty big too. Um, they get more of the northern schools, right? You know where we don't down here, and uh, so there'll probably be sixteen to eighteen teams there. And uh, so right now, you know, in all honesty, I, I want the girls to feel that pressure. I really do. You know, and uh, I'd be disappointed if they didn't feel the pressure because it, to me, it wouldn't mean anything to them then. So. We'll see how we handle it. You know, hopefully I've got them prepared where they feel relaxed enough and, and uh, we can go out and perform up there and see where we're at when uh, we got all those schools coming and then turn right right back around, go to the Elk Point one. That'll be a little smaller one just due to being down in our part of the state. And then uh, then we turn right back around and go to a big West Central one the, the following Monday. All right. And, uh, Hoagie, before we let you go, I'm going to pop this on you. I'm sure you've been uh, – uh, called about it, uh, saw it on Twitter uh, earlier this week. Uh, certainly big congratulations to you as uh, being selected as a finalist for National Coach of the Year by the National High School Athletic Coaches Association. Yeah, thank you, Joe. You know, that uh very humbling <laughs> and uh, at the same time uh, very honored for that. All right, and uh, that will be, uh, I think, uh, at the end of July when the uh, National Coach of the Year. Yeah, it's sometime in there. You know, it, it, you know, the thing I've been fortunate with, Joe, is I've had so much support yeah. over all the years. And I've uh, been doing this a long, long time. And uh, the golf course, the city, and uh, all the people that are associated with the golf course, and people like you. Yeah. You know, uh, that this is what it's all about. And, you know, I've had some great, great players that have played for, I'm not going to say me, for us. Mm -hmm. This has been a group effort. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> yep, no doubt. I'm just no. going to enjoy doing what I'm doing, Joe. Absolutely, and uh, keep on doing it, my friend. Well, Hoagie, with uh, no show uh, next week, we will catch up coming up uh, in a couple weeks. Uh, we'll have uh, uh Let's see, three invitationals and a duel to talk about when we catch up with you in a couple weeks here on Breakfast with the Coaches. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks, Joe. Kirk Hogan, the girls' golf coach at Vermilion High School here on Breakfast with the Coaches. Coming up next, Vermilion Girls Softball with Coach Mariah Van Asperen. Watching high school sports with Fuller Digital Solutions is convenient and free. Check out the Fuller Digital Solutions live stream on YouTube for area high school sports. Watch right from the comfort of your couch. And have you thought about advertising during the Fuller Digital Solution live streams? Thousands of viewers could see your business. Email fullerdigitalsolutions at gmail.com if you're interested. Bringing live high school sports streaming to you, Fuller Digital Solutions. Look us up on YouTube. Ease and confidence should be at the top of our minds when it comes to banking. 
But if your finances are clouding your future, call First Dakota National Bank. Supporting our local communities since 1872, we're here to help with personal, business, and ag banking solutions. We're ready to dream big alongside you. Whatever your financial needs or goals, First Dakota is ready to help. Member FDIC. What's worse than having to spend all day at the laundromat? A lot of them are hot, sticky, and smell bad. In Vermilion, you want to avoid that situation. Yuck. Eastgate Maytag Laundry is super clean and open 24 hours a day. Eastgate has super giant 60-pound washers and giant 70-pound dryers to make your wash day fly by. Eastgate is also located near many local restaurants if you want to grab a quick bite. Next time your laundry is piled up, pile in to Eastgate Maytag Laundry, located next to Jimmy John's on Cherry Street in Vermilion. Happy anniversary to us. This is Miles from Larry's Heating and Cooling. We are celebrating 41 years in business, and to commemorate it, Larry's is having an amazing sale. Right now, get a Lennox 90-plus furnace and 2-ton central air for $49.82, fully installed. $49.82. Or we can finance your purchase with payments as low as $95 per month. Call Larry's Heating and Cooling, Yankton and Vermillion, your local premier Lennox dealer. Breakfast with the Coaches on ESPN 101.5 AM 1570 online at kvtk.com. Continuing on with our Vermilion High School coaches, on the line with us now, Mariah Van Asperen, the head softball coach at Vermilion High School. And Mariah, a couple games to talk about from this past week. On Monday at home, ran into uh, Dell Rapids, and uh, Dell Rapids hands the Tanagers their first loss of the season. 18-7 to seven to go to 2-1 and one on the season. Talk about that game, first of all, Mariah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we knew going in um, to the game with Del Rapids that it was going to be a tough night. Um, you know, just that we knew that they had um, a lot of talent and skill. Um, you know, I think it was the fourth inning where we were tied or uh, maybe even up 1-7-6 to six or uh, six to five or something like that. And, uh, you know, they had the bases loaded and, um, one of their really great players, um, you know, hit a grand slam. So that was, you know, a good four points for them. And I think at that point in the game, um, we had a hard time mentally coming back from that. Um, you know, that same inning we gave up two more runs. And so when we came back into the dugout after that inning, uh, you know, we were down six. Um, so at that point, mentally, I think we just kind of um, let ourselves down a little bit, especially when we went back up to bat. You know, our confidence was shaken. Um, and so that's kind of where you see that, such that uh, deficit in the score. Um, but, uh, you know, I think we went back to practice on Wednesday and or Tuesday and Wednesday um, with the mindset of, okay, we need to get, you know, no matter what happens out in the field, we have to always have our steady confidence um, up at bat. And so we worked a lot at practice, um, just making sure that, uh, you know, we, we did some, we did some drills where the batters, um, had to be mentally tough. And if they weren't, you know, they have some type of punishment. We did some games and things like that where, um, you know, we had pitchers versus hitters and just trying to get them to be competitive at practice. All right. And then, uh, we go to a Thursday rescheduled from, uh, Late March, uh, I would say a big rival game with uh, Elk Point Jefferson. Tanagers edge Elk Point Jefferson 13-12 to as uh, your gals stand at 3-1 and on the season. Talk about that exciting one. Yeah, that was such a great game last night. Uh, you know, they came out really, you know, really strong. Um, and the whole game, you know, it was pretty neck and neck, you know, uh, right away. Um they scored a run and we matched their run with three runs and then they matched our three runs. And it just kind of, it kind of kept going on from there until, you know, that seventh inning and they went up two. Um, so it was 12 to 10 in that last inning. And I was really proud of um, our hitters who came in and, uh, you know, just came in with confidence. And uh I believe it was uh, Reagan Lee who had a really good hit at the beginning of the seventh inning um, to start us off. And, uh, you know, we had uh, Maya uh, or Madigan Wallen and uh, I can't remember who else it was, but, uh, you know, they, they had some really good um, up at bats. 
And then Bailey Baylor came in to finish with us as a grounder um, to bring in the last run to make it 13-12. Uh, so it was great to see that we could uh, finish the game, even though we were down two points. Uh, the bottom of the seventh, you know, a tough mental um, one, absolutely. But uh, I-, I was really proud of how we came back to, uh, to bat. All right. Uh, well, you talked about uh, a couple of your hitters. How's been your pitching uh, so far this year, your evaluation of that? Yeah, so we've we've got two of our main pitchers, uh, Meyer Halverson and Chandler Cleveland. Um, have been doing just such a great job for us. Uh, you know, our game plan from the beginning was to start um, Maya Halverson at pitcher and uh, Chandler at first. Um, we thought Maya would be a really good starter for us. Um, you know, she's got a lot of different pitches that she can throw, um, and she's really confident um, up there on the mound. And we, uh, our game plan is to usually uh, throw Chandler Cleveland in there, um, somewhere in the middle of the game to kind of be a finisher for us. You know, Chandler can throw uh, pretty tough balls, um, and she's just so competitive. And, uh, yeah, so we, we've been really proud of those two. I think last night was some of the tough – was the toughest game for them both. Uh, but I don't think that was necessarily on them. I think that we had a, um, a, a tough night in the field as well. So I think that impacted them, you know, more landed on their shoulders – uh, because we weren't able to get the outs that we've usually been getting. All right. Uh, well, a couple of games to uh, talk about. Uh, well, as uh, we won't have a show coming up uh, next Saturday, we'll talk about them in a couple weeks. But coming up next week, uh, right away on Monday, uh, Mariah Yankton comes to town uh, for a 4 o'clock matchup at uh, Lions Park in Vermilion, and next Thursday on the road at Madison. Yeah, absolutely. We're really excited for these games. You know, we think these could be some of two of the two of the toughest um, teams we see, or you know, in the top, you know, five toughest toughest teams we'll see this season. And so we're excited for Yankton. Um, I know a lot of our girls uh, actually have played in the past club softball in Yankton, so I know that there's a lot of friendships there, and you know, there's going to be definitely some rivals. So. Uh, Monday night will be a really fun game, and I think it'll be a good testament to our girls to see what we can do against against uh, a close town like Yington. Well, I was just going to comment on Thursday's night's game with Madison. You know, we're excited to finally be away for one, and, um, you know, we know that they just had a close loss to Del Rapids, um, so we know that it'll be a tough game, but we're excited to uh, see another tough component. All right, Mariah, we appreciate the visit this morning here on Breakfast with the Coaches. Again, uh, no show next Saturday, so we'll catch up with you and Tanager Softball coming up in two weeks. All right, Mariah Van Asprin, the softball coach at Vermilion High School here on Breakfast with the Coaches. We've got one more Vermilion coach to go, and that's Vermilion baseball coach Tom Heisinger. Tommy will join us next on Breakfast with the Coaches. Traveling to Vermilion for Tanager football, basketball, or just traveling through? The Red Roof Inn in Vermilion is a place to stay, offering great rates, clean rooms, with an awesome continental breakfast. Red Roof Inn does whatever it takes to make guests feel comfortable, making your trip the best possible. And furry friends stay for free. Located on Cherry Street in the heart of Vermilion, call the Red Roof Inn in Vermilion to make your reservation. Hy-Vee makes grocery shopping easy with Hy-Vee Aisles Online. Just order online, schedule a pickup or delivery time, then leave the shopping to us. Download the new Hy-Vee Aisles Online app or go to hyveeislesonline.com. It's easy to create and save grocery lists, shop the sales, and get fuel savers. Plus, with Hy-Vee Aisles Online, pickup is free on orders over $30, and delivery is free with the membership. Save time. Shop online with Hy-Vee Aisles Online. I'm Kevin Melm, store manager at Yankton's Lumberland. So interior design, we like to take the ordinary and make it extraordinary. People don't realize that taking a sofa and just by adding a rug, accessories, pictures to really make the room pop with maybe some color. It's absolutely free. So if you need help, we can draw out your room, sketch your room, come to your home. And it's a free service, absolutely. Interior design from Yankton's Lumberland. 2401 Broadway Avenue. Are you ready to start a career with an exciting team? Thermobond is looking to add to our team of experts. We offer competitive wages, a positive work environment, and on-the-job training. 
Thermobond is headquartered in Elk Point, South Dakota. And for over 30 years, we've been providing lightweight and precast solutions for multiple industries nationwide. Check us out and see if you'd like to start a new career with us today. Breakfast with the coaches on ESPN 1015 AM 1570 online at kvtk.com. Continuing on with our Vermilion High School coaches. On the line with us now, Vermilion High School baseball coach Tom Heisinger. And Tommy, let's talk about uh, a couple games uh, this week. Early in the week on Sunday, took on Freeman Canastota in Freeman. And Freeman Canastota comes away with a 2 nothing win. Yeah, uh, that was a that was a tough one. Our starting pitcher uh, Jack Moskowitz uh, threw a great game. I think he only gave up uh, two hits, but there were a couple errors behind him. And um, yeah, we lost the lead late, and offensively, we, offensively we just couldn't get anything going, and um, kind of beat ourselves with some bad at bats here and there. But uh, yeah, Freeman Canasota threw a good pitcher at us, and we just you know couldn't gain any momentum. So uh, yeah, tough one to lose, but. Um, kids learn from it. All right, and then you bounce back uh, Monday at home against Beersford Alcester Hudson, picking up the first win of the year, 17-6. to Yeah, that was uh, great for our kids. Uh, we kind of challenged them to come come to the park ready to play the next day and have a little more um, sense of urgency and intensity um, for themselves, and we thought they did a really good job. Uh, Trey Hansen stepped up for us, um, freshman on the mound, gave up, Gave up three in the first inning, and it seemed like you know two minutes into the game we were down three nothing. But uh, he kind of held his own, kept his head up, and gave us a chance to win. And um, offensively, we definitely came around, hit the ball really well, good at good at bats, and um, good base running and and things like that. It was it was great for our kids to get in the win column. Yeah, and especially scoring 17 runs, where uh, you know your offense uh, had only scored what uh, six runs up until then. Uh, yeah, I mean, we we took advantage of, uh, you know, some walks and some free bases uh, that were handed our way, but um, did some little things, too. Like, we, we bunted the ball pretty well and um, just better on the bases, more aggressive at the plate, and uh, the kids definitely responded. All right. Well, uh, Tommy, uh, the uh, kids are 1-4 and four on the season, and, boy, you have got a lot of baseball coming up in the next week. Uh, on this Saturday... Uh, at Prentice Park, hosting Parker and Centerville. Talk about the schedule uh, for uh, Saturday uh, with Parker and Centerville. Yeah, a um, lot of region games coming up here against some really good teams. Um, just kind of the way the schedule works once in a while with uh, a couple makeup games and and some things like that. And um, but yeah, uh, two games tomorrow, or I guess uh, two games on Saturday at Prentice Park, um, Parker and Centerville, both. Um, I think fairly fairly decent teams. They'll, they'll have some good pitchers that they'll throw at us, I, I would think, and uh, our kids will definitely have to come ready to play. We like to do these, you know, kind of double headers once in a while. It's almost like a a region or a state tournament kind of setup where our kids have to play and hopefully win two games in a day. Um, that's what you know they're going to have to do if they want to be really really good. So um, yeah, good for our kids. And then yeah, it's also nice too because. <clears throat> A lot of innings, and we will get to see some kids on the mound that we haven't seen so far this spring. Um, a senior will start for us the first game on Saturday, Eric Soulsley. We haven't seen him yet um, on the mound, and um, it's just good to develop as many pitchers as you can. Um, you know, because when it comes to region tournament time and that kind of thing, uh, you know, everybody knows there's no such thing as too much, uh, too many pitchers. So uh, it's going to be a test for us, but I think it's something that we need. All right. Uh, again, the time schedule for Saturday, Tom. Yeah, so we will host Parker at 1 o'clock. Um, and then basically, as soon as that game's over, you know, 20, 30 minutes later, we're uh, going to play Centerville. So I'm, I'm guessing that second game against Centerville will start about 3.30. So we're looking at 1 and, and 3.30, we'll call it, for Saturday. Um, yeah, just the two varsity games. So uh, hopefully a good day at Prentice Park and hopefully a lot of kids come out and, and watch us play. All right, but uh, boy, next week, Monday at Canton, Tuesday against Elk Point Jefferson, uh, on Thursday, Dakota Valley, and then a makeup game with Parkston at Parkston next Friday. Yeah, 
Um, I'm kind of looking at the schedule now and <laughs> maybe regretting um, scheduling all those games kind of so so backed up. But with the with the weather, you can't really you know try to get too cute with spreading out region games. So yeah, at Canton, um, that'll be another test for us, um, especially coming off some short rest on on Monday, um, Tuesday. I'll point Jefferson. Um, they got a good thing going now. Um, they'll be ready to play for us and or play against us, and we got to be ready. But yeah, those two games, and then I'm sorry. The week, yeah, I think, is, I think I messed up uh, a little bit, uh, Tom. Thursday, Dakota Valley, and then Friday yeah. with Parkston. Right. Yeah. yeah. So two, uh, you know, two really you know tough region opponents, um, Dakota Valley and Parkston. I've uh, definitely been in some state tournaments and stuff in the last few years, so that that's going to be it's going to be tough for us. But um, you know that's that's kind of the way it goes. We got to develop pitchers and and have our kids kind of go through that anyway. So uh, yeah, it'll be really tough for us. But I think that's kind of how it should be. Is uh, you know you're going to have to win games without your best pitcher and you know without I mean, kind of on some short rest and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, it'll it'll be tough, but I think that's the way it kind of has to be. All right. Well, Coach Heisinger, we appreciate the visit this morning here on Breakfast with the Coaches. With no show next Saturday, we'll catch up with you and Tanager Baseball in a couple weeks. Okay, that sounds good. I really appreciate you having me on. Tom Heisinger, the baseball coach at Vermilion High School, wrapping up our Vermilion High School coaches here on this edition of Breakfast with the Coaches. We'll be back to wrap things up with the Saturday morning sports update after this. Vermilion punts don't always know what a tanager actually is. They just know that it must be tough. At the Vermilion Federal Credit Union, we find that many people don't actually know what a credit union is. We of course tell them that we are like a bank, except we are not-for-profit and member-owned, meaning profits are returned to you through less fees and better rates. So start saving by becoming a member of the Vermilion Federal Credit Union today. Member NCUA. You want a lumber yard that delivers more. The lumber yard, Vermilion, has been going strong in the same spot now for 53 years, helping you find the building solutions you need, offering new technology with old fashioned, friendly, small town service, making the lumber yard in Vermilion your building supply solution from start to finish. When your crew is craving Pizza Ranch, it's easy to order online at PizzaRanch.com. Online ordering makes it fast and easy to order craveable Crispy Ranch chicken or build your favorite pizza exactly how you like it. And now for even more convenience, place your favorite order with just one tap. So when you're craving pizza or the country's best chicken, go to PizzaRanch.com and start your order. For craveable food and convenient online ordering, there's so much to love at Pizza Ranch. In a situation like this, the first thing you do, of course, is make sure everybody's okay. And then you're thinking, you better call your insurance person. Mm, no, just call Justin. At Vermilion Auto Works, you see Justin handles all the insurance claims and gives free quotes. Not everybody does the free quote thing anymore, you know. So call Justin at Vermilion Auto Works. He'll take care of the situation. Carrying WeatherTech, Rough Country, and Truxedo. Vermilion Auto Works. And back to wrap things up on this edition of Breakfast with the Coaches here on ESPN 101.5 AM 1570 online at kvtk.com. First, our Saturday morning sports update. High school girls golf Friday at Fox Run in Yankton. The Yankton Gazelles third behind Harrisburg and O'Gorman in a quad with a 392. The counters for the Gazelles. Elia Homestad second with an 89. Sabrina Kratzky fifth with a 94. Elsie Larson tied for 14th with a 102, and Madison Riken tied for 20th with a 107. A busy day for high school softball and baseball. In high school softball this afternoon on Five Star Streaming, Yankton entertaining Aberdeen Central at 2 o'clock at Sertoma Park in Yankton. And in high school baseball today on Vermilion Streaming from Prentice Park in Vermilion, Vermilion plays Parker at 1 o'clock and Centerville at 3 o'clock. And then Yankton Baseball is in Sioux Falls to play Sioux Falls, Washington, and O'Gorman. 
College track and field Friday at the Drake Relays in Des Moines, Iowa. South Dakota captured three flags. J.C. Pulse in the 400 meters in a school record time. Meredith Clark in the women's shot put and Joe Lynch in the high jump. Thursday in the distance carnival, Merga Gameda of South Dakota was eighth in the 5,000 meters with a school record time. Also yesterday, the Coyote women's 4 by 100 meter relay set the school record for the third time this outdoor season and are in the finals. We'll have a complete wrap-up of South Dakota at the Drake Relays coming up Monday on the sports. So, folks, that wraps it up. Thanks for joining us. Thanks to our Yankton and Vermilion coaches for joining us here on this edition of Breakfast with the Coaches. Again, programming note, no show next Saturday, May 6th, because I'm on the uh, in the booth at the Howard Wood Dakota Relays in Sioux Falls doing PA. So our next show, from Spring Sports, Yankton, and Vermilion High Schools on Breakfast with the Coaches will be on Saturday, May 13th. We're brought to you by our Yankton and Vermilion Sportscaster Club members who bring you Bucks and Gazelles and Tanager Athletics on Five Star Communications, Five Star Streaming, and Vermilion Streaming. You've been listening to Breakfast with the Coaches on ESPN, 101.5 AM 1570 and online at kvtk.com. Each and every Saturday, we sit down with the Yankton and Vermilion coaches talking about the fall and winter seasons. Coming up next Saturday, we'll have more Breakfast with the Coaches beginning at 8 o'clock right here on ESPN.